Good afternoon and welcome to the Zero Function Podcast, the uh, podcast with two idiots and an overachiever where no brain cells are present. I am your host for today, apparently. Uh, I am Lee, and with me is Jen and Connell. Hello. As usual. How are we today? Uh, we were right. We were right. Pretty good, besides the fact that I, you know, forgot it was Sunday. <laughs> yes, you like, did. And what? then fobbed off your hosting duties to me. Yeah. <laughs> Did I? I thought it was your week anyway. My oh, you mean just was, like now? It was my week to research. Yeah. to research, but it's at this point where it's like the person who researches for the week hosts for the week as well. Yeah. That's kind of just how it is. Yeah, kind of fumbled it, but we got there in the end. Yeah. It's right. like I was saying to Lee earlier, like Connell texts me every single Sunday to tell me like, am I good for the podcast today? <laughs> and I was just saying like, you know, I, I feel like I'd remember every week, like I don't really need Connell to tell me, but yeah. then at the same time, every time I get here, I forget to be like, ah, oh, don't worry, you don't have to text me for next week. But then today... <laughs> get the text hey you good for the podcast completely forgot about it yeah i kind of write out the text i'm like does she really need me to tell her this and apparently today she did so <laughs> the one time yes i did <laughs> it's good that i actually decided to do it yeah, yeah. look at you being all responsible <laughs> thank you <Lord. laughs> very responsible. it's a nice change mm. <laughs> righty i see how it is it's true <laughs> but i see how it is Oh, man. Oh, but anyway, Lee, what are we on about today? Yes, so as discussed on last week's episode, uh, we are covering a, another serial killer, which uh, I guess is my specialization now. Yeah, murder. <laughs> murder yeah. is a speciality. Yeah, murder in its various forms. Mm-hmm. Don't read too much into that. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, you um, Pisces? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a serial killer who was back in the news recently. Uh, that's right, today we're talking about the Zodiac. Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz. Yep. <laughs> Republican Senator Ted Cruz. Um, <laughs> See, this is when I wish we had a soundboard to put in, like, you know, like, creepy <laughs> effects and things like that. Just like, turn, it, turn it into a, a morning zoo radio show. Yeah, like, full Jeez. on radio, just like, wow. Well, hey, today we're talking about the Zodiac. <laughs> Uh, that was Air weirdly good. Ted, I, I, I don't think that's really appropriate. This guy um, killed at least seven people. <laughs> well, I think he should have killed more. <laughs> I did not like that. <laughs> that was actually really good, though. <laughs> uh, yep. Humor. Yep. So um, let's just dive right into it, shall we? Yes. Um, so the... It. Yeah, so uh, the Zodiac was uh, active in Northern California between the late 1960s and early 70s. Um, and, well, I say he, but it's, this, uh, this is an interesting one because the Zodiac was never caught. Like, we, we don't know who it was. Do you mind? I muted the microphone, okay? Nobody heard that, right? Cool, yeah. <laughs> yeah but we heard it. So. Well, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh. so, um, uh, yeah, he, uh, has, uh, so he was never caught. I totally, yeah, yeah. I, you, you totally derailed my train of thought. That's all good. <laughs> he was never caught. Keep your, keep your bodily gases to yourself. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, never caught, um, best known for the series of, cryptic letters that he sent to um, newspapers in the San Francisco kind of area. Um, yeah, operated kind of all around no- Northern California, or at least that's where the crimes took place. Um, he killed five uh, people that we know of, and mm-hmm. there were, from those crimes, there were two survivors. So seven known victims. Um, there are around 20 to 28 uh, s- people that are suspected to be victims of the Zodiac, you know, various murders that were never directly traced to this one person. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the Zodiac themselves, they claim to have committed 37 murders. Damn. Yeah. Wait, but I mean, if they're never caught, lot, how do they claim, like, how did it come well, out? Well, we'll, we'll get into that. Well, oh, I'm, okay, assu- cool. I'm yeah. assuming, like, anonymous letters and whatnot, like, yeah. mm, yes, I did this. Is he? Yeah, you're kind of on the right track, yeah. yeah. Is he the one who started that trend? Is he the one who cut out, like, magazine? Uh, um, yeah, a couple of his letters were um, constructed from clippings from newspapers and yeah. brochures and magazines and such. Well, just, like, associated with crimes, or... 
Um, like, have you seen before. in like movies and things like that the letters that are sent to the police made entirely out of like magazine articles, like the letters and things like that? Uh, I think it's a way to disguise your handwriting. Somehow I have not. Yeah, it's of- often presented as um, a way of like um, usually in like uh, kidnapping hostage situations yeah. in in popular culture. Um, mm. You'll see, you know, the especially like in the nineties and stuff. Um, I think the Simpsons did it a few times. You know, someone will get kidnapped and then the kidnapper will send a, a letter which is like made of um cut out words right, and such from yeah, different yeah. magazines and such yeah um because obviously you know handwriting for instance is a, is a thing you know, yeah they can figure out who you are from what your handwriting looks like so which is so nuts <laughs> <laughs> pretty mental yeah. yeah and that that's all uh that'll come into this a little bit just uh never write anything in your life you can't get caught <laughs> <laughs> yeah Checkmate. I mean, that won't don't, be a don't, problem. Don't learn how to write. <laughs> that won't be a problem pretty soon. Like we're all on iPads and like tablets and things like that. Oh, like, I mean, I, mean I, I still, I still do a fair amount of. Uh, yeah, but we were in the generation where we still well. had to like handwrite stuff. Yeah, it's like exams true. soon are going to be all typed and handwrite like stuff that. at work all the time. Yeah, because we can't have electronic devices. At work. Anyway, <laughs> we're uh, getting a little off track. So yeah, um, if you've seen uh, the movie Zodiac, which I was half planning on watching in preparation for this but just ran out of time um i believe it was 2007 um uh, a lot of the like speculation and putting together of the case um comes from a crime writer named robert graysmith um <clears throat> and he he was like the the main guy who was following this case and you know documenting everything um and he wrote a book called zodiac which was adapted into the film in 2007. Um, and he, in the film, was played by Jake Gyllenhaal, I believe. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, okay. yeah. This guy, this guy is like, he, he's, he's the one who put it all together. So right. they're, they're the like cohesive. pretty sure he is a he. Um, yes. Yeah, and that, that'll, uh, that comes up in uh, one of the, one of the murders, because um, there, was there was a witness. Yeah. Actually, yeah. there were witnesses to several of these crimes. Um, I don't. Given the specifics, it likely is a guy. I mean, yeah. 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 Um, Maybe that's another episode of female murders, because I literally couldn't name one off the top of my head. Mm. Yeah, so um, looking at the confirmed victims that we know were targeted by the Zodiac, uh, we have on December 20th, 1968. That's today. <laughs> Obviously is not it? the right same year. Oh, but it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, that's spooky. Oh, actually, that's that's just a really sad anniversary now, isn't exact, it? Exactly, <laughs> fifty-two oh, no. years to the day. <laughs> um, uh, yep, seventeen-year-old uh, David Arthur Faraday and sixteen-year-old Betty Lou Jensen uh, on July fourth, nineteen sixty-nine. He killed Darlene Elizabeth Ferrin, who was twenty-two years old, and nineteen-year-old Michael Renault Majot. I'm assuming that's how you say it. Very French name. Um, he actually survived the attack. Uh, on September 27th, 1969, uh, Cecilia Ann Shepard, 22 years old, and Brian Calvin Hartnell, who was 20, he survived as well. And on October 11th, 1969, Paul Lee Stein, a 29-year-old taxi driver from San Francisco, was He's not killed. a very good murderer. <laughs> <laughs> so he always went for, like, couples? Like, yeah. either brother and sister or... Um, no, they were, they were, they were, they were, they were couples. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, he mostly targeted... Couples, um, with the exception of Paul Stone at the end there. That seems so odd because, like, I feel like if you're gonna, you know, try and attack someone, if someone else is with them, <laughs> it's two against one already. Maybe you just like the challenge. Mm. He was like, mm. or it's just some sort of specific like resentment thing or like envy. Like I'm single. Resent- <laughs> en- yeah. Uh, yeah. Maximum well, level incel. Yeah. Well, we'll, well, we'll get into that with the uh, main suspect a bit later on, but um. This should be a much shorter story than Ted Bundy because obviously. I would fucking hope so. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, you know, this guy was never caught, so we Could don't. Can you imagine if it was? So much on him. If yeah. he did, like, all those murders as, like, Ted Bundy <laughs> and then also as the Zodiac. I wonder if the times that timelines actually add up. I um, have no idea. I don't remember what the timelines were. <laughs> um, late 60s? Oh, I don't know. I don't remember how old Bundy was around then. Uh, but yeah, so. Obviously, they were never caught, so we don't know anything about the person themselves. So we can just jump straight into the murders. Um, so, I love me some murders. 
<laughs> Maybe. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> that wouldn't be good. That's yeah. just like one of the clips. It's just, I love me some murder. Oh, yeah. Soundbite. <laughs> Clip it. Save it. Put it on the soundboard. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So, our we'll, we'll focus on the confirmed murders first. Um, so, the first confirmed murder of the Zodiac was... Uh, what are their names? David Arthur Faraday and Betty Lou Jensen, who were high school students. Um, they were out on their first date, and they were planning to go to a Christmas concert at Hogan High School. Um, rather than doing that, they stopped at a friend's house first, and then went to a restaurant. And after that, they parked up on Lake Herman Road around 10.15. Uh, they were found just after 11 by a woman named Stella Borges, who lived nearby. Uh Faraday had been shot in the head, and Jensen was shot five times in the back. And what uh, Graysmith put together from the evidence afterwards was that uh, another car had uh, pulled up behind them, um, and the driver, I guess, had ordered them out of the vehicle. Uh, It looks like um, Jensen exited first, and then as Faraday was getting out of the car, the killer shot him in the head once, and then Jensen has gone and tried to run away. Uh, her body was found about 10 metres or so from the car. I think the exact number was 28 feet, which is roughly roughly 10 metres, yeah. maybe a little less. Yeah. So, yeah. Looks like yeah. she tried to run. They're not, it seems... It's not very orchestrated. It is, but it's like... It's just the spur of the moment kind yeah. of thing. He's planned to kill them, but he hasn't, like... Thought it out very well. He's just like, yeah, I'll just, I'll, I'll just start blasting. See, like, <laughs> it's it's yeah. it yeah. sounds bad, but like, whenever murderers like they just shoot people and like that's it. It's just kind of like, well, well, why? Like, what, what did you have to gain from that? You just shot someone, and then you're just like, ah, okay, well, that was fun. Maybe like, it's just the fact that they're ending their life, and it's like, yeah, there's yeah. no like, maybe. And I mean, again, going back to our um, uh, episode on serial killers, you know, there could be any number of psychological issues with this person. Yeah, true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was the Lake Herman Road murders. Um, that's his ver- like very first, um... The, ver- the first yeah. confirmed one, yeah. Yeah, confirmed one, yeah. Um, so now we get to, uh, Darlene El- Elizabeth Ferrin, bleh, and Michael Renault Maggio. Um, they were driving to Blue Rock Springs Park just before midnight, um, and according to Maggio, who you'll remember it's actually survived this encounter, um, a car parked up next to them and then drove away, like, immediately. Um, it came back after about 10 minutes and parked behind them. The driver got out, walked to the passenger side of Ferrin's car, uh, shone a flashlight into their eyes, and shot five times into the car. Yeah. Um, so he, he actually had, like, a tactic that time. Uh, yeah, kind of, yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Um, and he, yeah, the killer actually walked away and then heard Majot, like, moaning, because right. he was still alive. Yeah. Um, and he returned and shot both of them twice. Again. Yeah. yeah. And yet he survived three... He did. Three yeah. plus gunship wounds. Bad. Yeah. Yeah, also, so... Uh, I wasn't paying attention. I'm assuming it was nighttime as well, since he used the flashlight. Yeah, it was uh, just before midnight. Yeah, right, yeah. Yeah. Before yeah. he shot that. Wait, so were they parked up at, like, a movie thing, or just, like, a... Um, just parked up. Yeah, they were just in a parking lot oh. at a like a like uh, Blue Rock so Blue Rock Springs. Is that a national you park? Think when you see the car the second time right behind you, you're like, I just thought you did. And he gets out of the car and starts walking towards you. That's when you fucking book it. But that's yeah. the thing. Like you said, this was the late seventies, eh? Uh, late sixties. This late was 60s. this was uh, n- July fourth, nineteen sixty nine. This one. So like that's the thing. Back there, people like. People just free love, you know. Like you just walk up to people, whatever. And like n- now these days, if right. we're not expecting people, we just won't open the door. It oh was, yeah, it was July the fourth, so people were probably in a better mood <laughs> that day. True. Yeah. <laughs> so they're this like, is America. <laughs> they're <probably laughs> having fun and they're like, "Hey, July fourth, woo!" And then <laughs> like that's not a firework. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Jeez. But like, yeah, that's the thing. People our age, like, if we hear a knock at the door and we're not expecting someone, we're kind of like. Who? Yeah, a little bit. What? Yeah, I I would be yeah. very reluctant to open the door to anyone yeah. I didn't 
Well, see, that's the thing. I, I always look out the window, and plus mm. we have the dogs that always go off every time. Yeah. So I like the dogs that go off. I look out the window. If I see someone standing there, I just I just won't open the door. <laughs> I'll pretend like I'm not home. Whereas other people, like the older generation, they're just like, oh, I wonder who that could be. Yeah, people were definitely a lot more trusting back yeah. then. Yeah. Yeah. So. Not a good movie. <laughs> no. <laughs> we have seen too many movies. Jeez. Officer, I swear it was a Roman candle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so yeah, um, there were about there was about seven and a half months between these two murders. Mm-hmm. Um, the it's well, kind of weird. You wouldn't think that he needed that much time to prep between murders if he's just shooting them. Yeah, I don't know. Obviously, we don't you know we don't have any insight as to what they Who were is. actually thinking. Yeah. When they, when they were doing this, so also, it's really just speculation. There may just be more murders in between the confirmed ones, so... It's possible. True. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't know about it. Yeah, so about half an hour after the actual... Oh, excuse me. About, about half an hour after the actual murder, um, or crime, uh, we're looking at about 12.40 a.m., uh, Vallejo Police Department received a phone call from a man who claimed responsibility for both the murders that just happened and the Jensen and Faraday murders. Huh. Uh, and they traced the call to a phone booth, which was located uh, just a few blocks from the Vallejo Police Department and about 500 metres from Ferran's house. That's like... That's weirdly accurate. Yeah. Like, uh, very well, not accurate, but we- weirdly... Like, he was, he was so close to them. It was yeah. a very confident move as well. Yeah. Like, damn. He he knows that because by the time they picked up the signal, like how far can you really <coughs> get in? What, how far was it from the? Uh, the it was only a few blocks yeah. from them, so you could easily get you could sprint there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If they were in a car, maybe five minutes tops to get there. Yeah, you go yeah. away in that time. I mean, they probably would have only started tracing them like midway through the call. Yeah, well. no, I mean it was and at at night, and, and you know, we don't how know many cars were out in the seventies at night? Mm. Who knows how fast tracing technology was? I, I don't know if it's like. I think thirty seconds. It's like in the call, it says that. Yeah. yeah. It, it sounds like something like that. But thirty yeah. seconds is such a long time when you're talking to someone like that, and you're just like, yeah. "Stay with me for mm. two more seconds." Oh yeah, yeah. So, uh, Ferran was pronounced dead at the hospital, and Majo was shot in the face, neck, and chest, but he survived. Somehow. Face, neck, and chest. Whoa, yeah. Those are like fatality locations and he's still fine yep like it's not even like oh you know leg arm like face neck and chest like i had just have to repeat <laughs> that because what i mean chest maybe it was away from the heart but the neck no but like imagine if it hit him in the lung shit. like you start like taking fluid on the lung like yeah yeah that's true but hmm. yeah. neck wh- how d- how many like possibilities do you get to sh- shoot someone in the neck and still miss mind you my grandmother's been shot in the neck and she's still kicking around jesus the all right yeah. me too yeah, she's, she's... Why was she shot in the neck? Yeah. Ah, South Africa. <laughs> ah, right, yeah, that's... that's Someone yeah, just they came would up do to it. her car, and they just, like, shot through the window, oh, and just, like, came through the back of her neck. Jesus. And what, was an attempt at carjacking, or just killed? Because carjacking Um, I think really they wanted her there. jewelry. Really? Yeah, I think that was yeah, the story. Yeah, right, yeah. But then they couldn't remove the bullet, because it would have taken... Um, it was too close to her nerve, so the bullet's still in her neck. Uh, still in her neck. Ooh. Metal. Yeah. <laughs> so if, if it like yeah I know all right if it like shifts or something they were like you could be paralyzed because it's ah. so close to your spinal cord but it's just chilling awesome just my grandmother's just chilling with a bullet <laughs> in her neck <laughs> uh, interesting alrighty then I have cool relatives <laughs> yeah but wow yeah sure it's cool if you, if, if you want to say cool yeah yeah I guess um, so. Yeah, so uh, Majot described his attacker <laughs> as a 26 to 30 year old, uh, 195 to 200 pound white male. Uh, that's about 88 to 91 kilos, um, possibly, po- uh, possibly higher. Um, and he was about five foot eight. That's a lot of information to grab when someone shoots into your car. Like most, yeah. most of the time, they're just like, I don't know, it was dark. <laughs> <laughs> but this guy's been shot. Three times they and we still like got a pretty good description of him. They don't yeah. have like anything. They probably grilled this guy for information. Yeah. I'm guessing since they don't have like any eyewitness, pretty much other than this yeah. guy and like I'm assuming a couple of other people from what you were saying before. Yeah, so, we'll get into like, that. Yeah. Yeah, they were really gonna go hard and like we need details right now. Mm. Mind you, actually, also thinking about it though, he did give the most generic description of like every man. Ever a little bit, yeah. Bit, he like, um he also described him as having a uh, short, light brown, curly hair. Okay, so that, yeah. that's like pretty 
pretty far. Pretty I don't know why. Yeah. I'm thinking of like a detective looking guy, you know, like with the um, fedora and like the trench coat <laughs> and things like that to like hide his identity. He, he, pr- he like, probably wasn't that dapper. Yeah, maybe. I would imagine. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, so now we get into the first of the um, letters that the Zodiac sent out. Do so do do. <laughs> on August 1st, 1969, which was about, what are we looking at? Maybe a, a week? Less than, uh, less than a week after? Wait. No. Hang on. No, I'm looking at the other one. Uh, July. Uh, about a month later. Yeah. So uh, b- yeah, about a month later, on August 1st, uh, three letters were received at the Vallejo Times Herald, the San Francisco Chronicle, and the San Francisco Ex- Examiner. Uh, they were nearly identical, um, and they took credit for the shootings at Lake Herman Road and Blue Rock Springs. And each of them also had uh, one third of a cryptogram, so a an encrypted like piece of text. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, the letter, uh, the letter, basically claimed that the cryptogram, when put together and solved, would provide the killer's identity. Yeah. And that uh, he and uh, demanded that the uh, pieces of the cryptogram be printed on each paper's front page, or the killer would quote cruise around all weekend killing lone people in the night, then move on to kill again until I end up with a dozen people over the weekend. Mm. Yeah. Now he says that, but I I don't know if he'd actually follow through it because his mo has been like couples recently. So why would he? Switch. Yeah. Suddenly. Yeah. Well, uh, the San Francisco the San Francisco Chronicle was the first sure. one to yeah. uh, was the first paper to punish its piece of the cryptogram. Um, they published it on page four. <laughs> oh. oh no. <laughs> and um, yeah, the murders didn't happen. Yeah. And the the, the the other two parts were published eventually. Um, See, I thought so. Like he's going for a specific thing. So why would he why would he switch? Like he's putting himself in more danger if he's going on with his but right. also yeah. with the papers, like if you're gonna publish it, why be like, you know what? He wanted this like front page. We're just gonna put it on page four to piss him off. Like, if you're gonna put it in the newspaper <laughs> at all, you may as well just do what he asked. Well, I I doubt they had much faith that it was actually, um, you know, gonna work. Uh, yeah, but that that's it, the thing. They're happen. also gambling with people's lives. Like, imagine if he was like really psychotic and he's like, I'm gonna do this, and they're like, Ah, bet you won't. Yeah, it's entirely possible. <laughs> you know. Um. You know, bro. There, <laughs> yeah, yeah there, there was. Like, no, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> there was there was an article printed with the piece of the code in the Chronicle, um, where uh, Jack E. Stiltz, the police chief of Vallejo, um, he basically said, uh, well, he said we're not satisfied that the letter was written by the murderer, and they requested that uh, whoever, whoever wrote the letter would uh, send a second one to further confirm their identity. Um, so yeah, the other pieces were published in the other papers, um, and on August 7th, six days later, uh, another letter was received at the San Francisco Examiner, and it began, Dear Editor, this is the Zodiac speaking. And uh, this is this is the first time that we've, you know, seen the name Zodiac. Yeah, sorry, I'm just, I'm just also passing around a, a photo of what the cryptograms looked like. So each one, this was supposed to say who he was. Yes, basically. Damn. Right, wait. Yeah. So did he? Sorry, I was I wasn't following. I was like distracted by the picture. Did you say <laughs> that he was re- he referred to himself as the Zodiac? Or yes. Other people did? Yes. He called he so called himself the Zodiac. He's also created a name for himself. That's that's quite the ego he's got there. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, I mean, G- given I'm, I'm just I'm just gonna say, that's a cool name. That's a cool name, the Zodiac. Yeah. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Um. Oh, and you 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 just know that the papers ran with that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. But you can tell he, he's called himself a name. He's made himself like a, what, a, a cipher or whatever the fuck they're called. Um, yeah. And he's going near police stations and calls and whatnot. This man has a large ego. <laughs> and he is running along with it. He knows he's intelligent. And he knows he can get away with these things, which is very dangerous. Yeah. Well, uh, this this letter was a direct response to Chief Stoltz's um, statement in the paper, where he requested, you know, another letter. So he, he's pretty much directly challenging them. Kind of, yeah, I in, guess. In a way, he's kind of treating it like a game. A little bit, yeah. Um, but yeah, in the, in the second letter, he, uh, like, included details of the murders that weren't released to the public. 
So, you know, things that only someone familiar with the murders or the police reports would have been able to know. Right, yeah, so yeah. directly confirmed it from that. Yeah, um, and he also included a message in this letter uh, saying that when the police cracked the code, quote, they will have me. Oh, yeah. damn. So, August 8th, a week after the cryptograms were sent to the papers, um, the the... Uh, it was a 408 symbol cryptogram, and it was solved. It, t- it took less than a week. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, um, and it was solved by Donald and Betty Harden of Salinas, California. Um, yeah, and there was no name in the text. Like, there was no way to identify the killer. Um, it's probably just baiting people. He wanted them to solve it, I'm assuming. Yeah, well, uh, he said he said in the in the decoded message that he wouldn't he wouldn't give his away give, give away his identity because it would slow him down. Um, and I have here the decoded message. Um, there's a series of 18, um, uh, blah, 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 blah. just letters. This is, is a, a series of 18 letters at the end of it, which ha- haven't been, like, identified as actually being part of the cipher. It's possibly just put them in there to, you know, make up the length of the message. Oh, um, yeah. 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 But this is the decoded text of the first cipher that the Zodiac sent out. I like killing people because it is so much fun. It is more fun than killing wild game in the forest because man is the most dangerous animal of all to kill. Something gives me the most thrilling experience. It is even better than getting your rocks off with a girl. The best part of it is that when I die, I will be reborn in paradise and the I have killed will become my slaves. I will not give you my name because you will try to slow down or stop my collection of slaves for my afterlife. And then there's a sequence of 18 letters, like I said, which don't mean anything. As I said before, he's just treating it like a game. Yeah, pretty much. Completely gnarly. Especially for the afterlife, like... (laughs) Yeah. um, So he must have had some sort of like belief that in the afterlife he would still like remain like there was something to like that does remind me of sort of online <laughs> which, which part <laughs> though? Right. Like, you know the murderer guild um the the coffin laughing guild? coffin yeah laughing coffin they just murder people yeah like they, they know people are dying but they're just yeah. like killing them treating the game like it is a game even though it does it isn't a game but yeah you know pretty much if you if you don't watch anime you have no idea what we're going yeah. on about but like <laughs> yeah pretty much <laughs> Um, <laughs> <weed. laughs> Yikes. No, that was mean. Yeah. Um, so, in for anyone who's interested, those letters at the end of the message are E B E O R I E T E M E T H H P I T I. Just in case anyone was interested. I was about to say, is it like an anagram spelling? I don't think that. I mean, it's it's been what fifty one years. Imagine if now. it was an anagram and like, but they just missed one letter or something, and then they're like, ah. <laughs> that would that would uh, that would be something. Yeah. Yeah. I feel would be very pissed off. And actually, like, says his name, and you're like, ah, well. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. So, um, the now we get to the third set of murders. Um, this is on September twenty seventh, nineteen sixty nine. So about about a month and a half after the. Uh, after the cryptogram was cracked, mm-hmm. and about, uh, I want to say two and a half months after the, um, yeah, it was about two and a half months after the Majo and Ferrin attack. Um, so, this was Brian Hartnell and Cecilia Shepherd. They were picnicking at, a, at, at Lake Berryessa. Um, they were... Apparently approached by a man with a pistol who was wearing a black executioner style hood with clip on sunglasses over the eye holes and a white bib or dicky kind of thing uh, on his chest, uh, which was painted with a crosshair design, which would go on to be the zodiac's like symbol. Um, so imagine a oh, yeah. imagine a circle with a vertical line and a horizontal line through it, making like a Just crosshair that. symbol. Right. Yeah. You mean like one of those target symbols? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like a, like so, um, a scope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Looks like... Wait, so he was wearing an executioner's hood with sunglass lenses? That. That's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's right. the symbol that the Zodiac uses. That, that badly used. drawn? Yes. <laughs> well, that, that's, that's an example of one that was... Yeah, yeah. It was all, all hand-drawn. 
character. Yeah. That is quite the get-up. Yeah, so he was wearing a black executioner-style hood, clip-on sunglasses over the eye holes, um, and a white bib-like device yeah. with the crosshair design on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah definitely not as dapper as I thought. No. Yeah, no. You know, um, and he was also, uh, I believe... Hartnell Walking around like a Death Eater. <laughs> no, uh, Shepard also described him as having gre- uh, greasy brown hair, I think. So he was wearing a hood. How did you yeah. see just it? Just putting up his stealth stats, obviously. Or <laughs> Assassin's Creed over here. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, uh, this guy claimed to be an escaped convict, um, and he demanded their car and money so he could go to Mexico because his car was apparently too hot. Um, I'm sorry? As in... Oh, as in as in the cops knew what his car looked like. Oh, I thought you just said oh. hot like air conditioner wasn't working. No, like, that's guys, it's really no, that, that's appara- that's apparently I need a new car. That was apparently how he described it. Was his car was too hot. Bro, we, we're actually, you know, your tagline <laughs> of this week's episode is not wrong. Both of us were just like, wow, his car's too hot. So like, he wants a new one. Like, it's not, it's not bad. He just yeah. wants to cool down. Oh, I was just like, dear. you can't be that picky when you're running from the law. Like, <laughs> oh, oh boy. God. Yeah, um, uh, so he basically ordered them out of the car and had uh, Shepard tie up Hartnell, and then he tied her up. Now, isn't the 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 murderer don't tied say up Shepard that like that? I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Hartnell initially thought that this was like a weird kind of robbery, uh, yeah. until the guy took out a knife and stabbed him six times, and then ah. stabbed Shepard ten times. Yeah, that changed his mind. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> one of them <laughs> survived, didn't you say? Yes. So, yeah. Um. So after this, the um, the killer, uh, he walked 500 yards back up the, to the road um, and drew his uh, crosshair symbol on on Hartnell's car door with a black felt tip pen. I thought he and wanted he, the car. Hey? I thought he wanted the car. Oh, yeah, he wanted, he wanted well. He's not going to drive around with a symbol on the outside. I don't, I, don't, I don't think he actually wanted the car or money. I think that was just an excuse to get them out of the vehicle. Uh, so that he okay. could, uh, yeah, we're just framing up as a robbery so he could easily kill them. Yeah, yeah. so he, he, he dragged them away further down towards the lake, I think. Yeah. And then hiked back up to their car. Um, and, yeah, uh, so he, he drew, drew the symbol on the car door with a black uh, black marker and wrote beneath it, uh, and I'm, I'm going to read this out verbatim, uh, Vallejo forward slash twelve dash twenty dash sixty eight forward slash seven dash four dash sixty nine forward slash sept twenty seven dash sixty nine dash six colon thirty forward slash by knife. So uh, obviously Vallejo, that's uh, where they are, and uh, twelve twenty sixty eight and seven four sixty nine. Those are the dates of the previous two zodiac murders, and uh, September twenty seventh. Uh, 1969, that's that day's date. Uh, 6.30 is the time, and obviously he's per- per- perpetrated the he's attack He's written like with a, a time of death on yeah. their door. He's yeah. He's like reporting on himself. Yeah, ba- basically he's written out a claim that he is the same guy who's committed these previous two murders. So he really wants three people murders. to know that it is him doing this. Like yes. He, he wants to claim it all. Yeah, basically. Yep. Um, What's the Instagram? How do you survive yeah. being stabbed seven times? Also, like, why are you such a good knife? Like, he had the gun before. Did he just run out of bullets? Well, we'll get to that. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, discuss that later on, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, about an hour after the murder, um, Napa County Sheriff's Office uh, received a call from a payphone. Again, uh, the caller wanted to, quote, report a murder. No, a double murder. And he then stated that he was the perpetrator. Uh, the phone was found a few minutes later by Pat Stanley, who was a radio reporter from the station KVON. Um, the phone was found off the hook at a payphone at the Napa uh, at the Napa car wash, which was 27 miles from the crime scene, but again, only a few blocks from the sheriff's office. Damn. Right. Yeah. Do you think he left it off the hook so it could be intentionally traced? I, I, that, would, that would be my assumption, yeah. Yeah, because if it's off the hook, then it's still on call, so mm. they can still do it. Yeah, it's still engaged. Yeah. It's yeah. just... Uh, this, 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 one, this one is an interesting one, because it's, it's the only case where uh, we yeah. see this, you know, quote-unquote zodiac costume. Uh, n- yeah, none of the other, none of the other murders are reported... 
It's only showed up the one time. The hood, glasses, the bib thing. Yeah, that's not... Yeah. It's the only, only time he's actually... He was there. trying out a style and decided he didn't <laughs> like it. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it might be a bit much. Well, yeah. there's, there's, a, there's a theory about that, which we will cover later. I feel like there's many theories about this person. <laughs> yeah. Like um, large number. So it's, it's almost like he's getting more and more like into it now, though. He's just like, yeah. I'm yeah, it's possible. Killer. Like, hell he's yeah. role playing. Because, yeah, the, fir- like, the first one was kind of just like... Bam! Second one, he called, mm. and then now he's like, "Yeah, like this, this is my character." Yeah, the first one, he was like, "This is neato." Yeah, it's, <laughs> po- it's possible that he could have been developing like a persona kind of thing. Mm. Mm. Yeah, um, it's surprising. Yeah, so detectives were able to lift a palm print from the phone, but it was never matched to any of the suspects that they later had. So, yeah. yeah. Also, how many fingerprints are you gonna pull off a payphone? Like, mm, exactly. Um, so yeah, after so uh. A th- there was a, a guy and his son were fishing uh, nearby uh, at Lake Berryessa, and they heard the screams of the victims um, and contacted park rangers for help. Um, a couple of officers from the Napa County Sheriff's Office, uh, they were the first uh, to arrive at the scene. Uh, Cecilia Shepard was conscious when when they arrived, uh, and she she's actually the one who provided the description of the attacker. Um, she... Uh, went into a coma on the way to the hospital and uh, never regained consciousness. She died two days later. Damn. Yeah, uh, but Hartnell did survive. Yeah, so she was stabbed ten times. He was only stabbed six. She gave a report on what he looked like while go- almost going into a coma. Yeah. That's kind. Of, that's quite impressive. Well, I would imagine she was in shock, you know, so kind of yeah. shock, calm. Shock adrenaline, maybe. Yeah. Like a mixture. Ten yeah. times. And I mean, the guy, the guy, you know, obviously spoke to them before he did this, That's and true. then yeah. tied them up and all that. So they w- they would have got a really good look at him. Yeah. You know, um, and kind of kind of distinctive garb that he was wearing. You know, maybe he didn't do the closing again because of that incident. Yeah, they it's got too good of a look at him, so he's like, nah, I don't want that. Yeah, don't want that it, again. it's it's possible. But yeah, the, uh, this was the uh, last of the attempted double murders. So the last of the couples that he targeted. Um, the next victim was two weeks later on October 11th, uh, still in 1969. Uh, just before 10 p.m., p- uh, taxi driver Paul Stein picked up a white male passenger about one block from Union Square in San Francisco, and the passenger requested to go to Presidio Heights. Um, a Stein drove him about one block, uh, before he was shot in the head, and the passenger took his keys and wallet and tore off a section of his shirt tail. Wait, I'm sorry. Say that Did again. He like <laughs> while he was driving, what? I'm so confused. I guess. Yeah. Wait. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. No, you're gonna have to say that again. Like I was listening, but then it just took a really dramatic <laughs> turn. So I just wait. Okay, so um, yeah, very fast. Okay, so Stein Stein picks this guy up, right? Which um, is the taxi driver. Yes, yes Paul, St- Paul yep. Stein was the taxi driver. He was Pick about, guy. I think he was 28 years old. Yeah. Yep. Uh, picks up this passenger, white male, um, you know, starts taking him where he wants to go, drives about a block, yep. which I don't know how I don't know how long a city block is. I think in the States it's a pretty standard measurement, like yes, especially in New York. But he's San Francisco, so. Let's say, let's say 30, 40 metres maybe, maybe. Yeah. I've Up been to San Francisco, but yeah, that's, I don't know. That's it's pretty accurate to that, yeah. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll just assume that. Um, yeah, drives about one block. Passenger shoots him in the head. So obviously the guy, the guy would have been in the back seat. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, uh, shoots him. Uh, takes his keys, his wallet, and tears off a section of his shirt tail to take with him. How did he, how did nobody notice that? How did well, hear that? well. Did you say near Union Square? I'm assuming U- that's Union Square. Assuming that's a very popular. Well, this place. this was this was uh it, it happened just before ten p.m. So, okay, Still. at night, you know, yeah. uh, going going into winter, so it would have been getting dark. Yeah, um, you know. but um, this was seen by three teenagers. Ah. Yeah, he was he was seen by three teenagers um who call, who called the police while it was happening. Um, they observed him. They observed the passenger wiping down the interior of the taxi, um, and then walking away. Uh, there were. Uh, the officers um, were pretty quick on the scene. Um, two blocks from the crime scene, they reported observing a white man walking down the sidewalk and stepping up towards the front yard of a house. Um, 
they only saw him for about five to ten seconds, uh, but they didn't um, didn't stop him because for some reason the uh, police dispatcher had um, first alerted them to be on the lookout for a black suspect. Of course, of <laughs> yeah. Course. Don't know why. Uh, uh, that's that, that's never been explained. They've, they've never explained why the description was mixed up like that. Well. Wait, we can take a good guess as to why. <laughs> the <laughs> operator gotcha. told the teenagers that? Or? Yeah, the, 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 dispatcher. the dispatcher, yeah. 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 So, yeah, um, the, basically the, per- the person responsible for sending officers yeah. out to various homes. Yeah, yeah so they told, they told them the responding officers to be on the lookout for a black suspect for some reason, I wonder which why. we can only speculate. Yes. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, so the teenagers, would uh, they, they worked with the, a police sketch artist twice. Um, to produce um, composite drawings of the suspect. Mm -hmm. Um, And one of the officers um, uh, estimated the pedestrian that they saw to be about 35 to 45 years old and about 5 foot 10 with a crew cut. Um, This was similar to um, what the teenagers saw. Uh, They reckoned the guy was about 25 to 30 years old. And about five foot, five foot eight, five foot nine, so kind of a similar age height range, yeah, kind of thing. Um, so th- they've got a decent like uh, description of them. But that's the thing; point. he still does look Amazing. like every generic male in that like yeah. age range, though. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's fairly generic, but a very like consistent description yeah. of this guy. I mean, that mm. could be both of you two. <laughs> Yeah, could be. Yeah, yeah, that's about the height of could be. Is, yeah. I mean, I mean, you're I slightly I shorter. Don't have but a crew cut, but you know. yeah, five nine. Yeah, yeah. So rough, yeah, rough. I don't have curly hair though, so. Mm. No, not really. <laughs> You've got like the <laughs> few the waves hair? from like a yeah. distance. You could be like. Mm. Fight me. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got curly hair. Oh dear. Bet your ass is. Oh boy. Yeah. So, uh, two days later, on October thirteenth, the San Francisco Chronicle received another letter from the Zodiac. Um, this one took credit for Paul Stein's murder and contained a bloody piece of shirt fabric. Ah. Um, I don't know if that if that was fabric from Stein's shirt, but the next day there was another letter with a piece of fabric that was confirmed to c- uh, come from Stein's shirt. So it was yeah. a piece of the shirt tail that the murderer had ripped off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this letter on the 14th um, inc- uh, included a section where he threatened to kill school children on a bus. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, and uh, he wrote that the way he would do this was, quote, just shoot out the front tyre and then pick off the kiddies as they come bouncing out. <gasps> that is yeah. quite the statement. Mm. Yeah. Also, I meant to say this before. He's got some balls shooting a driver. Like, what yeah. if he, like, as the driver goes out, what if he just, like, swerved or, like, did something and the car flipped? Like, yeah, he's, he's yeah, it's possible. More. I guess like at that point you don't really care shooting, about your own yeah. safety. Yeah, no. I mean, it's possible you did a two-face and, you know, just put a seatbelt on first. <laughs> <laughs> if you're shooting out, like, like the car tire of a... That was a Batman like, reference. Yeah, I got that. <laughs> <laughs> you should have a car tire of a bus as well. You don't know what's going to fucking happen. If you're just yeah. there, like, bang, and that thing just, like, swerves well, into you, you're yeah. gone. Well, ob- <laughs> obviously, you know, the, the bus threat was never actually carried out. Yeah, but still. Yeah, it's kind of messed up, really. Yeah. I'm just like, what can I do to get more excitement? <laughs> yeah. So six days after that letter on October 20th, um, at around 2 p.m., uh, the Oakland Police Department received a call from someone claiming to be the Zodiac. And they demanded that uh, one of two prominent celebrity lawyers, um, either F. Lee Bailey or Melvin Bailey, uh, they demanded that one of them appear on a talk show called AM San Francisco. Uh, that was hosted by a guy named Jim Jim Dunbar, um, and Melvin Belly actually appears in the film Zodiac, played mm-hmm. by Brian Cox, I believe, who uh, also played uh, William Stryker in X Two, oh, yeah. which is a great movie. Um, yeah, so uh, Bailey wasn't available, but uh, Belly did appear on the show, um, and the host Dunbar he basically asked viewers, "Don't call in, keep the lines open." And eventually, uh, a guy did call in. Well, he called several times, claiming to be the Zodiac, and said that his name was Sam. 
and uh, he, I guess, spoke with Belly for a while, and then they agreed to meet in Daly City, which I assume is in um, Northern California somewhere, but uh, no one arrived when Belly went there for the meeting. I mean, figures, obviously, be a sting would be, uh, a sting would obviously be... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah like, definitely. He, he weren't right there, he's not that dumb, so... And also, it's easy to assume that it's a fake name as well. Thousand oh, yeah. percent, such a generic name oh, yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah, there's no way his name was Sam. Yeah, so thousand <laughs> percent, he was there though. He was and, I mean, definitely there watching. Oh yeah, it's. I mean, it's not even you know, it's not even confirmed that this guy was actually the Zodiac. Yeah. You know what? Are, what, are, what are the chances that he was? It could have been another hostage that he was like, "You're going to call in and do this." Yeah. All, all we know is that someone claiming to be the Zodiac called the police and demanded one of these guys go on the show. Yeah. Yeah. We don't know that it actually was. Why, though? <laughs> don't know. Publicity. I That's yeah, my guess. I guess so, yeah. 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 So, uh, on November 8th, the uh, Zodiac mailed another card with a, cri- with a cryptogram. Um, this one consisted of 340 characters. And this is, this is the one that we talked about last week. Um, mm-hmm. the, this one was called Z340. And it was unsolved for just over 51 years. So Was it like a completely different set of code? Yes. Oh, yeah, okay. compl- completely different cipher. Um, obviously, you know, if it, if it was the same cipher as the, as the first one, you know, it would have been cracked pretty quickly. But yeah. different cipher. 51 years, this thing was not cracked. That they can get sold yep. for that long. Uh, until December 5th, 2020. So like last Damn. week. Yeah. Um, there was a, te- a team of private citizens from... I thought you were going to say, there was a teenager who was <laughs> looking into this, and I was just like, damn. No, th- no, this this is the work of a team of people, just like kind of, you know, not as affiliated with law enforcement at all, just like working on it in their spare time. Um, they were Jarl van Eyck, who is a computer programmer from Be- from Belgium, uh, David Orenchuk, a software engineer from the US, and Sam Blake, an Australian mathematician. How did so they e- know each other? That, that was just... Um, internet friends. It's oh yeah. Well, well obviously, I, I, I'm assuming they would have met through, you know, working on this cryptogram. And it's yeah. easy to assume yeah. that they've used like computer programs to crack this thing, given their probably given yeah their employment. Yeah, I would I would imagine so. Um, yeah. So they um submitted uh what they found to the FBI, who verified it. Um, and it. Again, gives no further clues to the Zodiac's identity. Oh. Although interesting. <laughs> what, is, what does it say? <laughs> right, uh, so the full text of it is there's, is... there's a lot of spelling mistakes and grammatical errors in both of these ciphers. Because obviously, I mean, you can't have punctuation in a yeah. cipher like that. Uh, but also the spelling is just terrible. I mean, it's possible we could chalk that up to um, translation errors. Yeah. Like in, in the solving of the cipher. But... It's also possible that he's just misspelled stuff. Um, but then, if there's so many spelling errors, what if that's just not it then? Uh, it's, mm, it's possible. I, because I'm there were no spelling errors in the other ones. I mean, well, yeah, but it, it all like makes sense get, reading like, it. Yeah, you so can just get the gist of it, I'm assuming. Yeah. You don't yeah. need the full story. Yeah, so this is the full text of the uh, encrypted message. <clears throat> I hope you are having lots of fun and trying to catch me. That wasn't me on the TV show, which brings up a point about me. I am not afraid of the gas chamber, because it will send me to paradise all the sooner. Paradise is spelt with a C rather than an S. Uh, Because I now have enough slaves to work for me, where everyone else has nothing when they reach paradise, so they are afraid of death. I am not afraid, because I know that my new life is life will be an easy one in paradise death. Yeah. I don't like (laughs) that. What what I got from that... Is he's done. He's, he's He's finished his work. Yeah, yeah, but what I got from that is also that the people he's killed are like his slaves in his paradise. Yeah, well, that, that's 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 what that's he believes, and that was a that was ugh, um like in that. the in the first message as well. That was something that he that he said. Yeah, yeah was that he was he was killing people to gain slaves for the afterlife. And like there's he's um taking their souls. He's like, <laughs> a, he's like a necromancer or something. That yeah, this whack. man was never caught, and nope. he was like twenty five in the sixties. Um, yeah, between, I reckon about, yeah, between 25 to 45. That'd make him what, like 70 thing? something now? He could still do um, yeah. 70, 50, 75 to 90, 95. 
Yeah, some, somewhere in there. He could or still be kicking around. Just it like, could oh, be. Yo. Potentially. Although, from what he's saying, I'm assuming he was just like, I did what I needed to do, and he, he may have just offed himself or something. Maybe. It's possible. Yeah. yeah. I feel like that could be a very... Um, can you honestly, imagine I, I he was just kicking around and it came up in the that. news, like, we've sold the Zodiac Killer, and he just calls up, and he's like, about time. <laughs> like, like, time to go again. And then well. shoots himself. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Yeah, so um, look, there's, there's another... Um, the... Uh, the way that the cipher was constructed, um, some people who've looked at this have theorized that there's a, there's a different way to read those last couple of lines because they yeah. kind of don't make sense. Yeah. Um, but if you move a couple of words around, um, if you move uh, is life to the end, um, it's uh, the last two lines read, I am not afraid because I know that my new life will be an easy one. In paradise, death is life. Or it could be the other way around. Life is death. Yeah. So. Uh, either either way, it's philosophy. Yeah. Well, he, well that's <laughs> it. Does make <laughs> sense that way because he's basically saying like he thinks that he'll he'll have uh, he'll have a new life after death. Yeah, it's entirely possible that that's the correct reading of it. Yeah. But I mean, the bit the big news is that this thing was solved. Fifty one years. That's pretty. And it gave it's us nuts. nothing. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't give you an insight though, but an insight to what that it was nuts. <laughs> it's incredible it and frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of the end of um, Zodiac really like being Doing active. Stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That's the end of his active period that um, all these law enforcement agencies agree on. Um, there, there were other murders that were, well, other incidents that have been, you know, sp- it's, it's been speculated that they were um, part of the Zodiac's uh, career. Mm-hmm. For lack of a better word, um, so on June fourth, nineteen sixty-three, eighteen-year-old uh, Robert Domingos and seventeen-year-old Linda Edwards, uh, they were shot and killed on a beach near Gaviota. Um, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to like go into detail on most of these, yeah, because you know they're not confirmed, and we're kind of running short on time a little. Uh, minutes, so yeah, yeah, short description. Yeah, uh, but. There, there were a lot of similarities between uh, this murder and the Lake Berryessa murders, yeah. which took place six years later. Um, there was Sherry Jo Bates. She was 18 years old. I, I believe she was a college student. Uh, she was stabbed to death and nearly decapitated on October October 30th, 1966. Um, ah. See, yeah. That's and odd because usually he does it quite cleanly, it seems. That's odd that he would go for something. Yeah, which yeah, and we'll we'll um I'll bring up in a minute why that was like speculated to be connected to the zodiac, uh, but the other murder that is uh, commonly attributed is that of twenty five year old Donna Lass. Um, she was a cleaning lady, I believe, at the Forest Pine condominiums in uh well, it was near Incline Village at Lake Tahoe in Nevada. Um, so, but out of the way, um, and that was on September 6th, 1970, so almost a year after the last confirmed murder, after Paul Stein's murder, um, that one was speculated to be connected to the Zodiac because of a, uh, postcard that was received, um, and I'll go into that, I'll go into that in a minute as well, um, so the... Another interesting one is that of 22-year-old Kathleen Johns, who was not murdered. Uh, she was allegedly abducted on March 22nd, 1970, um, around Modesto, California. Um, so, How are you allegedly abducted? Well, the, um, she later had some inconsistencies in her um, statements to police. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, it's, it's all, like, follows the same kind of thread. Um, so she was seven months pregnant at the time and had a 10 month, 10 month old daughter and she was driving from San Bernardino to Petaluma to visit her mother. Um, and at one point on highway 132, there was a car behind her began honking and flashing its lights. Uh, she pulled off to the side of the road and a guy parked behind her. Um, he approached her and told her that he'd seen her, uh, one of her rear wheels wobbling and offered to tighten the lug nuts. Um, he did so, and as she pulled away, the wheel, like, fell off. 
oh, pretty much immediately. <laughs> uh, so the man then offered to um, take them to a gas station for help. Uh, yeah. You think you'd, you'd be a bit suspicious after the wheel goddamn falls off? Yeah. Well, she got in the car with her kids because, you know, she doesn't really have any other way of getting there. Uh, but he, he drove past several several service stations, but didn't stop. Um, drove drove around on the back roads for about an hour and a half. <laughs> um, and she uh, she asked him a few times why he wasn't stopping, but he, w- he would just change the subject. Um, and at one point he stopped at an intersection, and she jumped out with her daughter and hid, hid in a field. Um, and he got out and started searching for her with a flashlight. With with, with a flashlight. Um claiming that he wouldn't hurt her. Um, he eventually gave up and went back and back to the car and drove off. Uh, after which she hitched a ride to a police station. Uh, yeah. It seems interesting because it seems to... Because um, it sounds similar to what the Zodiac does, but it also doesn't. Because it could just be like a copycat killer or something. But Yeah, well... He, he, the Zodiac killer would like... He would do it so quickly. He'd do it like that. But this person's kind of just like... They've kind of lingered. They haven't really... Yeah, well, this they was... Um, the deal. This is about also, who gives up after... Like, they've seen your face, <laughs> seen what you look like, whatever. <laughs> and he's just like, ah, oh, she's out there somewhere. Yeah, going. yeah well, that's, 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 an, that's the uh, interesting thing. Because uh, this happened about six months after Paul Stein's murder. Yeah. Uh, and if you, rem- you remember, those three teenagers worked with the police sketch artist mm-hmm. to create a um, sketch of the uh, man, well, the alleged perpetrator. Yeah. Um, when Johns gave a statement to the sergeant on duty, she noticed the sketch uh, hang- hanging on the wall and recognised it as the man who had abducted them. Oh. Yeah. That's a bit so that's, 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 where, that's where that connects in. Interesting. Yeah. Um, and when they found her car later, it had been gutted and torched. Right. So it was basically burnt out on the side of the road. I'm assuming she had prior knowledge of the Zodiac Killer. Cause it um, would be, you'd think it would be in the media quite a bit. If she, if she, if she was in California... In the late in the late sixties, around that, yeah, she she probably heard of it, but maybe you know. yeah, since it was Nevada, maybe it wasn't like actually like. Um no she, no she was uh, she was in California. Oh, I thought it was Nevada. No, uh, Modesto. Oh right. It was, it was, it was around the, it was around the Modesto area that this happened. Right right. right. Yeah no, uh, Nevada was Donna Lass. Right. That's where she disappeared from. There. Yeah. Um. Mm. Yeah. So she had some inconsistencies in her accounts. Um. Uh. In one statement, she claimed that he threatened to kill them. Um, in another one, she didn't. Um, in one, she uh, claimed that he uh, left the car and searched for them with a flashlight. Um, in another, she said that he, that he didn't leave the car. So, just, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. You know, um, not completely consistent. So her account is questionable somewhat. It's quite conflicting. Yeah. Statement. A little bit. And that's what I'm saying as well. He's the most generic male ever. She probably saw the sketch and was uh, like her brain just kind of like, yeah, it yes. kind of fits. Yes, it's probably that. Yeah. So um, there were a bunch of other letters and postcards and such sent to newspapers, allegedly by the Zodiac. Um, so uh, throughout 1970, um, there were a bunch of letters sent. Uh, the first one was on April 20th, uh, where the Zodiac wrote, my name is... Blank. Um, it was like a under long underscored line, like like a name field on a mm-hmm. test. Yeah, um, and that was followed by a thirteen character cipher, which I don't believe was ever solved. Um, and on February eighteenth, there had been a uh, bombing which killed a police sergeant, um, and this letter uh, basically claimed that the Zodiac had nothing to do with that. Don't know why. Like I don't I don't know if they actually suspected it's, him or not. It's odd. Yeah, but um, very odd. They're just like ah, it's not him though. <laughs> but he did he did say in the letter that quote there is more glory to killing a cop than a kid, kid spelt with a C for some reason, uh, because a cop can shoot back. Yeah, so this guy like makes a lot of spelling errors in his letters and stuff. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's odd. Uh, yeah. Um. And again with the school bus, uh, the letter included a diagram of a bomb. That the, that he claimed he would use to blow up a school bus. No. Yeah, this guy has a thing for school buses. And at the bottom, like that sentence. <laughs> not like that. Yeah. Uh, so at the bottom of the diagram, um, he wrote. Uh, well, he drew 
a he drew the crosshair symbol again, and using that he wrote out um, crosshair symbol equals ten sfpd equals zero. So that is basically pretty much universally interpreted as saying zodiac score ten, San Francisco Police Department score zero. Yeah. Yeah. So he's claiming to have killed ten people at this point. Again, there were only seven confirmed victims and five actual murders. Uh, but yeah, at this point, he's claiming ten. Ten murders. Interesting. Yep. Um, on April 28th, so eight days later, he sent a greeting card to the San Francisco Chronicle. Um, it said, I hope you enjoy yourselves when I have my blast. And it had his little crosshair symbol on it. Um, and on the back of the card, he threatened to use the bus bomb unless the newspaper published the full details of what he wrote. Um, That's just another version of yelling where he threatened to do the shit. Yeah, and he I'm also... Just, I'm assuming he didn't do it, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> he, he, he also said he wanted to see people wearing um, Zodiac buttons. What? So, like, you know, you know you little, like, enamel buttons with the yeah. Zodiac symbol? He, he, wanted peop- he wanted people... He wanted to see people in public wearing those. It's kind of weird so because, odd. like, I don't want to, like say he didn't do much but he really didn't do all that much and yet he's so famous yeah well it, a lot of it, a lot of it comes down to the the, the nature of it like the the um the ciphers yeah and well the i'm looking at that like yeah. cipher of like the my name is yeah and imagine if that actually just did crack what his name was yeah it's possible i mean no no one's I doubt it, but it's possible no one's um you know solved it uh there were i think Four ciphers, four cryptographs that he um, sent. Yeah, there were uh, four cryptograms within these only various letters that he only sent. Two of them were only only two of them were solved, and right. one of them was only solved this year, obviously. So, yeah, it's like really complicated stuff. Um, yeah, uh, and in a letter on June twenty sixth, he uh, said that he was upset that he didn't didn't see. He wasn't seeing people wearing the buttons. Um, <laughs> wow, yeah. bro, what the hell? Yep, How's and he weird? claimed that he shot a man sitting in a parked car with a thirty eight. Um, and uh, a week before the letter was received, uh, another police sergeant, Richard Raditich, uh, he was uh, shot in his squad car while riding a parking ticket, and he was shot with a thirty eight caliber pistol. Oh. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, he... Yep, uh, he's not claimed credit for the uh, bomb killing, but he's claimed credit for this this uh, shooting. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hmm. Of course, the San Francisco Police Department denies that the Zodiac was involved in that killing. Right. Um, and it does remain unsolved. So, yeah. Um, and with this letter was a uh, roadmap of the Bay Area in San Francisco. Um, and on top of a specific, specific part of it, um, a place in San Francisco called Mount Diablo, um, the Zodiac had drawn a, a cross symbol, a cross circle, similar to his Zodiac symbol, but uh, not quite. It looked more like a like a compass rose, right. and it had um, numbers set around it. So at the 12, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock positions, yep. he had written a 0, a 3, a 6, and a 9, and um, there, w- there was a there was an instruction like written next to it that uh, stated that the zero was to be set to mag n, so magnetic north. Mm-hmm. Um, and this letter also included s- included a cipher. It was thirty two letters, um, and the writer claimed that the cipher, when it was solved, um, when used in conjunction with the uh, compass code thing that would lead to the location of a bomb. And uh, apparently that was set to go off during autumn. Uh, obviously, the cipher was never decoded, and mm-hmm. the bomb never went off. It was never located. Maybe it was so. just like, none of them were getting close enough, so he was like, ah, I just won't bother. Yeah, possibly. Maybe that was it. He was like, it's not fun enough. <laughs> won't be frank Maybe it was just like a time capsule or something. Yeah, it's possible. Um, yeah, so... In this letter, he also uh, wrote another score at the bottom of it. Uh, Zodiac 12, San Francisco PD 0. Um, so it just keeps going up. Uh, yeah. Mm. Pretty much. That's so. Yeah. 
<laughs> there's another letter on July 24th um, where he took credit for Kathleen John's abduction. Mm-hmm. So he's now officially, well, whoever wrote this letter has taken credit for it. Um, you know, whether or not it was actually the Zodiac writing these letters, we don't know. Um, this was four months after the kidnapping. Mm-hmm. Um, and in another letter on July 26th, um, he, uh, which he signed with a uh, new score of Zodiac 13, Police Zero. Um, he put a, uh, a note at the bottom of it that uh, kind of explained, I guess, how to decode the map. Yeah. Um, it said, P.S. The Mount Diablo code concerns radians plus hash inches along the radians. Um, so I really want to keep this off, eh? Yeah. So yeah, he's just like you, y'all are <laughs> stupid. He's like, please, <laughs> we can blow up this bomb. Yeah. So a little bit, little bit of math stuff. Um, a radian is a term used in uh, mathematical geometry. Um, it's it's a an angle equal to uh, 180 over pi, or just under 57.3 deg- uh, degrees, and it's uh, basically it's the length around. If you take the radius of a circle, mm. if you take that length and lay it along the circumference of the circle, that gives you the angle of that arc that it forms gives you the gives you uh, a radian, mm-hmm. so just under fifty seven point three degrees. Yeah. Um, and Gareth Penn, a zodiac researcher, in nineteen eighty one, he um, discovered that when a radian angle was placed over the map. Um, according to the instructions that the Zodiac had given, um, it pointed to the locations of two confirmed Zodiac attacks. Ooh. Yeah. All right. I don't know. I just, I just found that kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know, in like a puzzle-solving well, kind of way. It's just, see, that's yeah. the, yeah, I love all those sorts of puzzle things. I'm just yeah. so like, how has no, but like he's given them pretty much all the clues and they're just like, Mr. Um, Policeman, you yeah. could have saved her. I gave you all the clues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's pretty much just gone like this isn't fun anymore. Like, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Um, see, uh, there was a, another card received by the Chronicle on October seventh. Um, it was signed with the zodiac crosshair and a small cross, reportedly drawn in blood. Um, I don't know if that's actually true, but that's what they said. Um, and it was formed by pasting some words and letters from a previous issue of the Chronicle the newspaper, and it had 13 holes punched across it. And uh, the inspectors assigned to the case agreed that it was highly probable that it came from the Zodiac, this card. Yeah. So, on October 27th, um, Paul Avery, who was a reporter for the San Francisco Chronicle, uh, played in the film Zodiac by Robert Downey Jr., I believe. If any, if anyone following along at home has seen the film, they'll know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, neither. I didn't realize that there was an original Yeah, um, came out the year before Iron Man, I believe. Oh, damn. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, just, just a little tidbit of information for you. Um, yeah, and he was he was basically the guy who'd been reporting on the Zodiac case for the last couple of years. Um, he received a Halloween card signed with the letter Z and the Zodiac's crosshair symbol. Um, and he, handwritten on it, was the note Peekaboo, you are doomed. Oh, that's wait, the actor. No, 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 the the reporter. <laughs> oh, Avery. Yeah, yeah I no, was not just like what? No, not not Robert Downey Jr. No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 I, was, no. I thought you meant like just later after the movie came out. He <laughs> no. got this like note, and I was like, dude, no, that's this is sketch. this is 1970. Oh, this is, okay, this yeah, is still yeah, 1970. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Still though, receiving <laughs> that, you'd be like, oh. Uh, yeah, look, yeah, no, they they took they took it seriously, um, and it received a front page story. Oh, finally, <laughs> in the Chronicle. And um, s- uh, pretty soon after this, uh, Avery received an anonymous letter that uh, b- basically alerted him to the similarities between the Zodiac's previous murders and the Sherry Jo Bates case. You remember, she was um, beaten to death and nearly decapitated. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's why that's considered, um, like, part of it. Yeah. You know, otherwise, I, I, get, I assume it would be, you know, just c- another murder. Mm. Uh, but it's because of this letter, like stating that these things are related, that they actually um, say you know, they are. Yeah. So they actually look at it as a zodiac thing. Yeah, 
and uh, yeah, these findings were reported in the Chronicle on November sixteenth. Um, yeah, uh, and uh, the Bates murder actually happened in uh, LA at uh, the City College in Riverside. So yeah, kind of not in the San Francisco area. Yeah, like LA is more it's more North. Southern California, I think. Whereas San Francisco is more northern, mm-hmm. and a lot of the, more, the Zodiac yeah, murders yeah, mostly yeah. took place in northern California. Yeah. So, yeah, not quite the same area, but, yeah. Um, yeah, and there was another postcard uh, that was received uh, on March 22nd, 1971. Uh, it was addressed to Paul Averly. So, same guy, just his name spelt incorrectly. Um, and this one, rec- uh, it claimed responsibility for Don Lass's disappearance. Back in uh, September of 1970, and that's that's why that one is uh, um, Shit. considered related. Do you related. think he just ended up with like a group of murderers and just claimed them all under the zodiac? Because the styles change. Well, well, we we will we'll, we'll get into that very shortly. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that that postcard was called the Pines card because it was um, created with like little scraps of words from uh, various sources which included a brochure for oh boy what was it called um it was a don't know, it was uh the forest pines condominiums that's right because that's where that's where less worked so yeah. yeah um so that was called the pine card oh the pines card sorry um and after that um there was pretty much nothing for uh almost three years Mm-hmm. From the Zodiac. Um, and on January 29th, 1974, uh, the Chronicle received a final letter um, claiming, th- well, he was, he was basically uh, saying, for some reason, that The Exorcist was, quote, the best satirical comedy that I have ever seen. <laughs> yeah. What? Like, he's broken three years of silence to talk to them about a movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Wait, is that all that it said? Um, th- there were there were um other things. He's um there's so a film critic now. Eh, <laughs> loosely. Um, th- there's a Gilbert and Gilbert and Sullivan opera called The Mikado, which he's been kind of referencing in other letters. Yeah, but it's like it's not considered really important. I don't think, which is why I didn't cover it before. Uh, but yeah, there's a bit of that in this letter. Yeah. Broken three years of silence to be like, yo, whoever directed that, good job. Yep. And he concluded the letter with a new and final score. Me, 37, SFPD, zero. Whoa. That's yeah. quite the jump. So he is claiming to have killed 37 people. Uh, and if you remember, his previous claim was... 13, wasn't it? 13? Yeah. Yes. His previous claim was 13. Oh. So... He cl- he's claiming to have performed 24 murders in the last three years. Which isn't <laughs> improbable. <laughs> um, that's like, what, eight people a year? Yeah. That's, I mean, uh, it'd, I'd, I'd, it'd, it'd take, it would take some doing, you know, d- tr- trying to do that and not get caught. But well, I mean, yeah, but I mean, if he's already gone he X amount of yeah. years without getting caught, like, given his yeah, intelligence, you know. he could pretty easily. That's the thing. It's the fact that he's almost just retired. He's like, you know what? Um, <laughs> I'm good now. Like, yeah, peace, enough. guys. That uh, it's been fun. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> what if it was just a letter today, just like a hundred zero? Like, oh. <laughs> yeah, like he's on Bad his deathbed packed. and he's just like, hey, <laughs> just don't read this, but can you just mail it to the? <laughs> that so would like, be nuts. imagine if he ended up with like wife, kids, all that sort of st- like stuff, and mm. he just. Like, because that's the thing, they never knew thing. who he was, so he could have just been, like, straight chilling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, imagine yeah. if he sees like his wife, like, just, just send this to the LAPD. Yeah. He's like it's like finding out your dad is Ted Bundy. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah. Nice. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was the final, like, uh, cor- correspondence that they yeah. had from the Zodiac. Um, and the case is still considered open in Napa County and Riverside City. Uh, the San Francisco Police Department uh, marked it as inactive in 2004, um, but they did reopen it uh, sometime before March 2007. Yeah. Um, so it is still ongoing. Like, See, it's still an open case. 
like I like the fact that they you know want to find it out, but I feel like if you haven't made any progress in the last twenty years, <laughs> yeah. you're probably just like ah, okay. yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, like yeah. there's, I mean, there are a few cases like what's it? Um, oh, I don't remember what one it was now, but he gave like fifty years of his life to trying to find out what like what was going on, and I was like, really? Take it. I wouldn't have a clue. I I was reading about it recently. It's, it it's sounds like familiar, yeah. Oh, you're yeah. pretty pissed 50 off. 50 years. Mm. Some people do. Yeah, some people do have obsessions that last decades. Like, and uh, 50 years and you've only, like, made, you know, like, two steps of progress. I'm sorry, but just uh, give up. Just do something else, please. <laughs> do something better with your time. <laughs> oh, like, man. How many other cases could you solve if you weren't dealing with that? Yeah. Bleh. Like, yeah, like... <laughs> It's unfortunate, but sometimes you just gotta let it go. Because that's the thing, they've made a movie and everything, so the Zodiac Killer's probably like, yo, they're, they're still thinking about me. Yeah. They're still sick. Yeah, so, um, to finish up, we're gonna go over two of the, like, main theories that uh, people have come up with yep. for the Zodiac. Um, so the first one is the prime suspect, a uh, man named Arthur Lee Allen. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of this comes from Robert Graysmith's book Zodiac. Yeah. which, again, was adapted into a film. Um, and there's a lot of circumstantial evidence around this guy. You know, nothing well, that really... That's to be expected. Yeah. There's, there's nothing that really directly ties him to it. Just a lot of coincidences and, you know, weird things that you can't really explain away. Um, I mean, he, he's been interviewed by police, like, since the early days of the investigation. So, so he, he was one of the earlier suspects. Yes. Yeah, he, he was he was a suspect for most of the time that he was alive. Right. Um, yeah, he had a bunch of search warrants. Um, uh, the they, the police stated in 2010, uh, I believe that uh, like pretty much all the evidence ultimately turned out to be negative, so they didn't really have anything on him. Yeah, but I mean, at the same time, look at all the circumstantial evidence around Ted Bundy. Like, how circumstantial was it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so on October 6, 1969, so about a week after the Lake Berryessa attack. Um, he was interviewed by the Vallejo police because uh, he was in the area while it was happening. Um, he uh, reckoned that he was scuba diving at Salt Point on the day of the attacks. Um, so he was like in the area, like he was at the lake. Yeah. Um, he was again brought to the police's attention in 1971 when his friend Donald Cheney um, went to them reporting that he had like said some weird things to him. Yeah. Um, he, uh, this, this, uh, he reckons this conversation took place uh, no later than January 1st, 1969. Uh, and he reckons that Alan, uh, I'll quote here, uh, had spoken of his desire to kill people, use the name Zodiac, and secure a flashlight to a firearm for bu- visibility at night. Ah, those are... Yeah, but... Uh, uh, mm. Ah, yes. <laughs> mm. Um... Yeah, the Vallejo police uh, uncovered that uh, Allen had received an other than honourable discharge from the US Navy in 1958. Uh, He'd been fired from his job as an elementary school teacher in March 1968 after allegations of sexual misconduct with students. Allegations, nothing proven. Just going to say that right here. (laughs) But yeah, pretty icky. Um, It doesn't seem like the Zodiac MO does. No, well, well, uh, people, people who knew him um, they, you know, generally thought well of him, I suppose, but uh, also des- uh, described him as fixated on young children and angry at women. And he apparently never had a girlfriend or wife. Ah. Well. Yeah. So maybe g- that's why he was going after couples. Yeah, again, again back, back to what you guys maybe were saying earlier. Changed. Yeah. The supreme incel. <laughs> Um, yeah, so in September 1972, uh, the San Francisco police, ex- uh, they obtained a search warrant for Allen's residence, and in 1974, he was arrested for sexually assaulting a 12-year-old boy. Um, he served two years in prison for that. Uh, they served another search warrant on his residence in February 1991, and he died on August 26, 1992, and two days later, the police served another warrant and seized property from his residence. Um, yeah, a lot of the evidence was found to be entirely circumstantial. Um, there, there was How did he die? Um, good question. I didn't actually uh, look that up. Um, Going to paradise. <laughs> uh, 
Arthur so, so, Lee. Wasn't Zodiac Ellen. stuff happening after he died? Um, no, 1992. So contact with Zodiac, like all the Zodiac activity, activity had ceased well before that. Uh, well, heart attack. Into, heart attack. He was 58 years old. Oh. 58. Yeah. Huh. Well, that doesn't really <laughs> does that match up with the timeline. Yes. Um. Roughly, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So I mean, I guess he could have been a suspect. Oh, obviously, he's the prime suspect. Yeah. But, um. Yeah. But he died before anything could be could be done about it. Um. Yeah. So one of the letters sent uh, to the Riverside Police, um, by Bates's killer. Um, was typed with a royal typewriter with an elite type. That's typewriter speak for mm-hmm. you know, specifications. Um, but that was the same brand that they found when they searched Ellen's house in uh, 1991. Yeah. Um, he owned a Zodiac brand wristwatch, which he wore frequently. Ooh. And he uh, lived in Vallejo and worked only a few minutes away from where Ferrin lived and from where one of the killings took place. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, the San Francisco police in 2002, they uh, attempted to uh, develop a DNA profile from uh, the stamps that were on the Zodiac letters, so like from old saliva. Yeah. Um, they developed a partial profile and compared it to Alan's DNA and also that of his friend Don Chaney. Mm-hmm. Um, neither result indicated a match. Um, so they were... You know, they basically didn't uh, consider them to be contributors of the DNA. Um, and Lloyd Cunningham, who is a retired police handwriting expert, uh, he worked on the case for decades, and he uh, said, quote, they gave me banana boxes full of Alan's writing, and none of his writing even came close to the Zodiac. Yeah, so he, he didn't he's, recognize he's, them. Uh, he's just a messed up guy who's kind of goes similar to the Zodiac. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so that's not a lot. You can change the handwriting, though. Yeah, there's a lot of circumstantial events like but surrounding this guy. What ever happened to the murder weapon, the pistol? Uh, don't know. Guy took it with went, took it with him. From, yeah, he went from a pistol and then he went from to a knife. Yeah. Uh, then he went what back to the pistol. Did he? Yeah, he shot the taxi driver. Um, oh yeah. He yeah, shot uh, the the first two attacks on the couples. He used a gun. Yeah. Uh, used a n- knife for the thir- yeah, third. Yeah, knife one? for the third. Yeah. Or was it the second one? No, shot shot the first two. Yes, shot the shot the first yeah. two, and then the third the third one was the uh, the whole costume thing with yeah. the knife, and then he shot Paul Stein. That's right. Yeah. 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 Um. So yeah, different like murder methods, different uh, kind of mo's, um, and that uh, ties into the second big theory is that uh, it was just a hoax, like the the Zodiac was a hoax. Um, so what's saying that it wasn't like an actual person? Seems a bit far fetched. Yeah. So um, this guy Thomas Henry Horan, um, he was a retired community college professor and private instructor. Sorry, why did I say that? Private investigator. He was a community college instructor. Oh, just getting my notes all mixed up. Um, he he basically put forth this theory that none of the murders were connected. Um, and that whoever was writing the Zodiac letters were just taking credit for these murders and, like, putting them together. What, so they just think some nerd in his room being like, yo, this is shit. Um, kind of. Um, that kind of falls apart when you get to the, uh, like, Berryessa murders. But then also the phone calls. Like, how would they know yeah. that this happened? Yeah, exactly. That person would just have to, hap- like, happen to yeah. see a bunch of murders. I, I can't <laughs> see it as a hoax. That's yeah, well, um... Too yeah, so he... Claims that you know the the obviously the modus operandi of each murder was you know consistently different, um, mm. uh, you know as opposed to uh, serial killers who generally will you know have a consistent mo and yeah. you know targets. Um, <coughs> uh, and the Riverside Police uh, have like rejected the idea that Bates was a Zodiac victim. Yeah. Um, so there were only those four actual attacks that are, you know, uh, believed by all the involved law enforcement agencies to be Zodiac related. Um, I reckon it was. A, I reckon it could be a group of people because 
Maybe one likes mm, killing quick with pistols. Maybe one person likes stabbing. Because it's really not hard to find people that look kind of similar. Mm. Yeah. Um, he sure. he also claimed that the uh, Lake Herman and Ferran Majo attacks, uh, they happened at places that were like known to be frequented by drug dealers. Yeah. And that it was possibly you know low level street co- street crime gone wrong. Yeah. Um, and the Lake Berryessa ac- attack uh, was probably the work of a copycat criminal. Because um, you know he, uh, you know he, he had the costume, and he wrote the, um, you know the note on the car door with the yeah. dates of the previous murders, and he used a knife when all the other murders were done with a, a pistol mm. or, a, or a gun. Um, <coughs> yeah. Um, Is that the only time that a knife was used? I believe so. Yeah, and those, those, those the yeah. girl that was nearly decapitated like way later. Uh, yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. What if it's just a group of people and they each of them have their own <laughs> sorts of fun ways of doing it? I think it's, it's possible. Like, I think it's more likely to use one gun and a bunch of copycats. Um, that's what I think. Pop- look at complete. Well, not completely unrelated, but like look at Banksy. Banksy is a person. <laughs> yeah, but there are actually a group of them. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. So if you don't if you don't know Banksy's an artist, he's a street artist. Nobody knows his identity, like his real identity. Mm. He is a real person. He went to art school and things like that, and then after that, he just dropped off the grid. Um, and now he's a street artist through all of the UK. But there are like groups of people who also do the art, and then they just tag it with Banksy. Mm. They're all sort of like an underground corporation sort of thing. But it is one person who started it. Yeah, uh, so young younger viewers, uh, younger listeners might know, uh, might know Banksy best for the self shredding painting mm. at the art auction. Yeah, that was kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, it, it could just be someone started it and then they were kind of like, "Yo, I need to get in on this." Yeah, yeah. So, because um, they don't actually have to be like, they <laughs> wouldn't have to like meet. They could just tag it with the Zodiac Killer, and then they'd be like, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's possible." Not? Yeah. Um so the the yeah, the, the 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 main theory that Horan puts forward is that the uh whoever's writing the letters was completely unconnected with the murders. Yeah. Um cuz uh the, the letters obviously contain information that was only um uh, available in the police reports. So it would have to be, you know, either the murderer or someone who had access to the reports. But those reports were circulated freely uh, among uh, the police and reporters. You know, in, in stark contrast to con- contemporary police practice. Yeah. Where, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't give those reports to reporters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, That's the thing. Reporters back in the day were almost like private investigators. They, they yeah, just a little went bit. everywhere and did everything. Yeah, inv- like investigative had, journalism was a lot more of a thing, yeah. Yeah. It seems like they had a lot more freedom as well. Um, to do it, yeah. I'd say. Yeah, probably. Mm. Yeah, um, and there were, there were a lot of, like, errors in the police reports that were later corrected, but that were, um, like, in the in the letters. Mm. Yeah, so, um, yeah. The, uh, he reckons it was probably someone with access to the police files, you know, like a reporter or a police officer. Um, and that uh, they they are the ones sending these letters and cards. Could have been the guy from the um, what was it, the Continental? What was it called? No, eh? what was it? John Wick. John Wick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the wrong thing. Um, the fucking newspaper. Which one was it? Paul Avery. Yeah, 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 yeah. Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. guy who received the letter. Maybe he just <laughs> wanted to get like famous being the journalist. He was like the primary one. So he's like, um. Hey, it's a theory. Stuff. I don't. I don't think it's like a a you know very strong one, but it's definitely a theory. Mm. Um, I mean, at this point, any theory you come up with is just as likely as any others because there's just nothing to go off. There's nothing solid. Yeah. So that is pretty much what we know about the zodiac. Thank God. You know, there's last week, more. last week when you told me like the codes and soul, I thought we were literally going to be discussing like. <laughs> who is the Zodiac Killer? Like, and we're going to be talking about all sorts of things like about him, but it's well, still unsolved. Well, we, 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 know, we know who the Zodiac is. It's Ted Cruz. <laughs> Obviously Ted Cruz. <laughs> oh, my lord. It has to be Ted Cruz. <laughs> and on that note, I feel like this is a good place to end. <laughs> this place is so goddamn hot in this room. Yep. I need to go open some windows. Oh, it is 
the we are hard into summer here in New Zealand. Oh yeah, yeah. it's not good. Oh. It was bad. Right. Yeah, everyone's having like snowflakes and things like that, and we're like, ah, we're having a heat wave. Yeah. <laughs> yep, we don't. Right. So um, this episode will be uh, coming out Christmas Friday, Friday so Christmas yeah. Day. Yes. Really? Oh, that means I have to do it on Christmas. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Fun thing, you can oh, schedule to... uploads. That is true. I can do that. But am I going to? <laughs> I mean, you can upload on Christmas if you want to. I'll, I'll have enough time, let's be honest. But anyway, this has been the Zero Function Podcast. Lee, I will give it to you to end us off. All right. Um, Merry Christmas, everybody. Uh, don't get murdered. And <laughs> we'll see you next week. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, it wasn't until you mentioned it.